Well, good evening, everybody, and we welcome you ringside. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we're just about ready for action. Mr. Untouchable's on his way to the ring, and you can just tell what kind of night he intends this to be. He's just brimming with confidence. making his way to the ring right now. Puffing out his chest, glaring with those eyes, and taking a big stride to his destination of glory. by Mr. Untouchable. Mr. Untouchable spanged around by a big uppercut. Up and down, side to side. He had his eyes set on the uppercut, but was unable to land it. Mr. Untouchable! Good, solid right hand lands. He is stunned there, and now he ties up. He ties up, and he was allowed to tie up, and that's what he's going to be sorry for, the other guy, that he allowed himself to get grabbed. Scored well up top. Last 10 seconds. Mr. Untouchable's putting forth an effort, but he's not being effective in that regard. No, he's not. He's not landing when he needs to land. And it kind of reminds he's a banger, too. He can punch a little. It reminds me of an old saying that a trainer once told me. It doesn't mean anything to have a big punch. It's kind of like having a military weapon, a bomb. What good is it if you don't have a missile to get it to the target? Right now, he needs a missile to get that punch. He needs to set it up, and he's not doing that. opponent is not seeing the damaged goods he was opposite of in the last round. This is a different fighter starting this round right here. Good step back counter punch there. He saw the uppercut, he took advantage, throwing it out there. The Warriors hit by that counter shot. Well placed left hand there. Good flush shot upstairs. And you can see he wanted to do that as he holds on there. He gets hit, but he gives it right back. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. He's committed to the combination punching now. It's working out well up top. Just 10 seconds to go here in the second round. And they come to the end of the round. Joe and Teddy with your ringside. And boy, oh boy, are they putting on a show tonight here. Well, kind of what you expected. These styles kind of told you that this is what you were going to get. You need to move your head more, okay? Side to side. Lean to the side, then boom! Kind of a kind of punch. And round number three is underway. 
Unable to land clean by Mr. Untouchable. The Warriors feeling the impact of a big counterpunch. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. That's a serious power punch he just landed to the head. Oh, you see him with the left to the head there? And he returns on that exchange. Mr. Untouchable showing you a little defensive skill there. I don't move away from that punch. Last 10 seconds of round number three. Oh, he turns it over right into a hook. And that's the end of round three. Assert your punches. Listen, I want you to pick his jabs. When he throws a jab, parry it away and you'll catch him, okay? You got that? It's gonna happen. You're gonna catch him. You need to capitalize on it. Mr. Untouchable's ahead on Teddy's scorecard as we take a peek at those scores for the first time here today. Round number four just underway. After three rounds, he finds himself up just a round, but nothing really to pull away early on. Able to get away from that headshot with the block. The Warriors being very patient here, but it's with a plan in mind. Yeah, it is with a plan in mind, and that's why he's such a successful fighter. He's trying to lure his opponent into a mistake. And he ties up on the inside. 90 seconds to go in round number four. The Warriors done a good job there offensively scoring with that left hand. Good accurate hook by Mr. Untouchable. Mr. Untouchable showing that he's got... There it is! And down he goes after that left hand. One, two. And somehow, someway, he's going to continue on here. And if he's going to stay in this fight, now he's got to avoid this opponent like the Black Plague. Combination to the head. The Warriors coming off a round where he scored big. He scored the knockdown. I suppose right now he's got to think to himself, Teddy, how did I do that and how can I do that again? He should think that to himself. That's what his corner's there for, to remind him. You know how you did it? Do it again. Hey, hey, keep your hands up, all right? You're not protecting yourself. Mr. Untouchable's corner tried to steady him and give him some sound advice with the 60 seconds they had to work with him. But keep in mind, that was a left hand that came raining in on him. He does not look good right now. Expect him to clinch. Wow! How about that? He goes from being the victim to handing out the punishment. One, two, three, four, five. Down he goes, but he's going to continue on, beating the count. Nice defense. Good block by Mr. Untouchable. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. Minute and a half to go. Really good work right there, landing the two punches in sequence by Mr. Untouchable. Flush right hand to the head. One, one. Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. Up cut. Now a well-placed hook to the head. He's hurt. I need you to jump on him in this round, all right? Okay, you're doing good. You watch the water in the corner. 
You need to cover up more, okay? You're leaving yourself open too much. Cover up! It's a chance at redemption here with a fresh round. But, Teddy, I'm always concerned as to how a fighter looks after he's been knocked down in the last round. Well, it depends how much experience he has. And he has enough experience to handle this, to kind of shake it off, get himself together, and move forward. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counterpuncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. A target on his head, and he places the hook right on it. That was a miss by Mr. Untouchable. <gasps> and bang, and away he goes. And he goes down for a second time. Does he have enough this time to rise up and continue on? He went down from a big shot. Now he's got to have some big guts to move along. You're going to find out exactly what he's made of. Able to land the hook to the head. End of the round there. A round in which we did see the knockdown. And Teddy, when a fighter comes back to the corner, having just been floored, typically how are they acting? What are you seeing out there? Just imagine you just walked into a room and somebody hit you from behind. You dropped. You're afraid to go in that room again. So, put a light on in that room and explain to him why he got dropped. He will not be afraid to go back in that room. Keep it simple, okay? Just keep it simple. You're making this harder than what it is. Focus for me. You don't need that. I'm going to throw that away. I don't know that there's any hope here if we start this new round. He's been knocked down numerous times already tonight, including the last one. And I'm sure on that fateful night with Corrales and Castillo, when Corrales had already been on the floor two times, his mouthpiece was out, it looked like it was over. I'm sure nobody thought that it was only beginning. And it was. Corrales came back and scored a knockout. Look at that! Once again, he goes down. Can he survive this? Untouchables in prime form. Power surge here. Knockout winner. That's what you want to see. A guy who can close the show and finish with style. He ends up a knockout victor tonight. And that's what his trainer wanted. His trainer was even telling him, step it up a little bit because he knew this was possible, and they got it. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Have yourself a great evening.